Hey everyone. So one of the biggest keys to an efficient downswing is your ability to shallow the golf club. And a lot of times this is just a simple mechanical fix that your golf coach can find. But more times than not, it's actually a physical issue. So if you struggle with shallowing the club shaft in the downswing, I am going to show you literally the best exercise that'll help you with that. Before we get going, if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, statistics show that 90% of viewers aren't subscribers and it really makes a huge difference. And if you find this content useful and you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Again, it makes a big difference. So if you've tried a bunch of drills with your golf coach and, and nothing seems to be working, you're still having problems shallowing out that club, most likely it's a physical issue. And I'm willing to bet that it's a shoulder issue. Now I can already see some of you kind of nodding your head like, yep, I've got shoulder issues. So the first thing you need to do is take the shoulder mobility test for golfers. And I'll leave that link down in the description. It's a simple assessment that's gonna measure your shoulder mobility and your shoulder stability. That's gonna really tell you whether or not that is an issue. So first I want you to understand what your shoulder needs to do in your golf swing in order to shallow the club. So here's a shot of Rory McIlroy, Tiger Woods, and Matt Wolf. Uh, all of them at the very peak of their backswing. And as you can see, Rory and Tiger have similar external rotation there in their, in their right arm. And Matt, he's more internally rotated. His shaft is pointed straight up at the sky. Um, we all know he's got a very unorthodox swing. But what's important here is you'll see the transition as all of these guys come in to shallow their club, that they all get into external rotation that elbow's inside that shoulder, and especially in Tiger there, you can see his elbow is way inside his shoulder, and his wrist is actually outside of his elbow. So he gets really good external rotation there in his, in his shoulder. But even Matt, who was internally rotated there at the top, he still gets down, gets his elbow down, and gets, into, gets that shoulder into external rotation as he transitions into the ball. All right, so now let's get to the exercise. Okay, so this is the shoulder external pales and rails exercise. And what pales and rails stands for is progressive angular isometric loading and regressive angular isometric loading, all right? So with this, all we're gonna do is we're gonna just focus on external rotation and creating more range of motion in our shoulder. Now, what you're gonna need for this is any kind of strap without elasticity, so a resistance band won't work very well. Um, rope, belt, I'm gonna use a TRX band, and you just want it anchored onto something sturdy, so if you're at the gym, squat rack, cable pulley, and I'm gonna perform this, this exercise in a half kneeling position, but you can definitely do it in a standing position in a split stance, okay? So I'm gonna show you with my right arm, obviously right-handed golfer, that's my trail arm, that's kind of what we're focusing on, is getting that external rotation in our trail arm. So I'm gonna to wanna to have my left knee up, right knee down for this exercise. So if you're in a split stance, you want your left leg forward, right leg back. So let me run through real quick without, without the band, just so, just so you're straight with what we're gonna do here. You want to, abduct our shoulder to 90 degrees, and we want our elbow at 90 degrees. So this is the position that we're gonna work out of. Key to this is keeping our rib cage down, keeping our pelvis neutral, engaging that glute, making sure that everything is sort of locked in and stable, because we don't want any sort of rotation here, any compensations. We just wanna focus on this shoulder, just wanna focus on creating range of motion in the shoulder. So when we get into this position, what we're gonna do first is, I'm gonna have that band in my hand and I wanna to get to as much external rotation as I have to start. So if it's this far, this far, whatever it is, I want no slack in the band and I wanna be at full external rotation. Then what I want you to do is, we're gonna hold that position for two minutes. And while we're holding that position, we're gonna relax diaphragmatic breathing Four deep, four seconds in through the nose, eight seconds out through the mouth, okay? For two minutes, just try and relax into that, focus on your breathing, just a nice passive stretch. Then after the two minutes, we're gonna go into our pails contraction. 
and I want this to be the highest, safest contraction. We're going to slowly ramp up from zero to 100, so 0% to 100% of, of a safe contraction, and we're going to try and internally rotate our shoulder. Now, it's not going to move because there's no slack in that band. So it's an isometric contraction. But again, I don't want you to just try and crank it. I want you to slowly and safely ramp it up as much as you can. We're going to do that for 15 seconds. That's how long the contraction is going to be. Then after the pails contraction, we're going to go right into a rails contraction. So then we're going to reverse and we're going to go back into external rotation as far as we can. Now you'll notice the band will, the slack will be let out of the band at that point. Again, we want to focus on a high, safe contraction of going externally as much as we possibly can for that 15 seconds. Again, keep your, keep your ribs down, keep your core engaged. After that, then we'll set up into our new range of motion and go back into a two minute passive stretch. So let's give this a shot. Got my band. And again, I want to get into my half kneeling position, 90 degrees here, and I want to be as much externally rotated as I possibly can. Rib cage down, pelvis neutral, glued on. And from this position, I'm just holding this position. Nice passive stretch. I can feel that stretching in my shoulder joint. And I'm focusing on my breathing. Four seconds in, eight seconds out. We're gonna hold this for two minutes. All right, so after the two minutes, now we're going into our pales contraction. So we're gonna try and pull this band forward as much as we can into, a, into your highest, safest contraction, slowly ramping up from zero to 100. Ready? Fifteen seconds. And then immediately switch into rails. Now we're going back into external rotation. As you can see that band, the slack gets let out of that band. Again, trying to ramp it up, get as far back as possible. Keep that rib cage down, and after 15 seconds, now we can sit back into our new range of motion. And again, now we go back into our two minute passive stretch and focus back on our breathing. Okay, if you couldn't tell, these pails and rails can be really taxing on the body, all right, on the specific joint that we're working. So typically I'll do two to four reps, and it really just depends on what else I'm doing that day. Um, if I'm really working on my shoulder and I really want to work on that range of motion and, and get intense about this exercise, I absolutely will not do it on the same day that I'm doing other upper body exercises. Um, I'll do it on a, on a lower body day. It really just depends on what your split is. Um, but if you've never done these before, I'd recommend one to two reps um, and see how you, how you sort of recover from that. Um, because we are really stressing, we're creating new range of motion, stressing those tissues, opening it up to what it hasn't been doing or, or maybe possibly never done. Um, so there, there is going to be some soreness. It's good soreness. That's what we want to do. We want to create more range of motion and we want to strengthen, our, strengthen that new range of motion. A um, couple keys, obviously. We want to focus on that range of motion, so we want to keep everything else engaged, right? We want to keep those ribs down. When we're in that passive stretch, stretch really focus on that breathing. Try and relax into that stretch. Stretch. Jeez, I can't say stretch today. And when we go into our pails and rails, slowly ramp it up. Highest, safest contraction, okay? There's no reason to try and gun it. There's no reason to absolutely go to 100% either, right? Especially if you're new to this and just trying it out, ramp it up to 50. As you saw, I already created a lot more range of motion, maybe 10 degrees there, just after that one rep. So these will work, um, and it's gonna take a little bit of time to really kind of reinforce it, but this will help develop that 
get more external rotation in your shoulder, which obviously is going to allow you to, to make it a lot easier to set your club and to shallow it in transition. So give that a shot. As always, I appreciate you checking out the video. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button and please give it a like. It makes a huge difference. And I'll see you next Monday for a new golf fitness video.